Good evening. My name is Chad Belleville, and I'm the superintendent at Fairfield Union Local School District. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me this evening as we look at plans to reset and restart education at Fairfield Union in the 2020-2021 school year. Our plans are being developed in two phases. Tonight, we will look at a broad overview of how schools will open up in August of 2020. In the background, our administrative team and our staff are working diligently to prepare plans for the day-to-day -day operations of the school. As you can imagine, those plans are quite a bit more extensive and will require more time to put together. Late last week, we received guidance from Governor DeWine and the Ohio Department of Education in regards to guidelines for how schools should function. Now that we have that information, it is full steam ahead in preparations for August. In the development of our plans, I do want to explain we've tried to be as flexible as possible and think of every scenario that we can. In developing our plans, it has been critical that we try to find a balance. While we know no plans are going to be perfect, and we're not going to hit the mark for every single student and family in our community, we have tried to think and plan for all of the various needs of our community. We've worked hard to try to figure out what is best for students and how to educate students and get them back in school, which is critical to their development and growth. We've tried to figure out what helps families, what helps our community. We realize daycare was an issue in the spring. We know the challenges our families faced and we want to try to be there as much as possible. And finally, I have an obligation to really look at and consider the well-being of our staff. In developing our plans, I'm so proud of our staff and what we saw out of them in the spring. We had many people working long hours, early in the morning, mid-afternoons, late at night, to try to be there for students and families, however our community needed us. As we move forward and we look at all the various plans that we could do and, and what you'll see this evening in our plans, a critical component is taking care of our staff. If we have staff members who become ill or are required to be quarantined, it really jeopardizes the operations of the entire district. Our goal is to have all students in school as quickly as possible and as safely as possible and if we don't have a full functioning staff, we know that simply can't happen. So in the development of our plans, we've tried to balance the needs of all of these components, students, families, community, and staff. On top of that, we also need to look at the guidelines and the restrictions that are placed upon us. We do want to make sure that while we, want, while we intend and need to educate our kids fully, We've got to do it in a safe manner. So as you will see this evening, and I hope uh, what you'll understand, is that our plans are designed to be flexible. We know that there could be changes along the way, so we've tried to incorporate many options that allow us that flexibility to meet changing demands. As we go through, I will try to explain other factors that have gone into decisions and factors that will be used as we make decisions moving forward. Tonight, as I said, we'll be showing a broad overview of our plans. And as we move along in the coming days and weeks, we will continue to share information with our community on our webpage, through phone messages, and through events like this, where we sit down and have a discussion in the evening. I hope you find this session to be informative, and as always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to email me at chadbellville at fairfieldunion.org or contact our district office to speak with me directly. And with that, let's get into the plans. We want to look at the opening of Fairfield Union for 2020-2021. Our plan of action is to reset and restart education. We know that things are different, and I don't know that they'll ever be quote-unquote normal again. 
but we're going to work extremely hard to make it the best we can. As we put our plans together, and this, this plan that will be on our web page after this evening, once we're finished, we'll post this to our web page so you can go back and revisit it at your convenience. This um, video message that we're having this evening, you'll be able to go back and watch it at your convenience as well. So I'm hopeful that uh, there are many avenues where you'll be able to receive this information. We do intend to send this out to all student email addresses as well, so you will be able to access it uh, through your student's email account. Each section we'll go over this evening. Uh, we'll start with just some guiding principles, and then we'll get into different phases, uh, how we're preparing our schools to have a healthy learning environment, and then what we're going to do throughout the year uh, to account for different scenarios. And then we'll wrap it up with some additional resources for our community where you can continue to receive information on the COVID-19 virus and how schools will be functioning. In our operating principles, it is the goal of our district to be fully open for the 2020-2021 school year. At this point, it is much too early for us to make declarations like you see in some districts around us. It is my intention on July 20th to ultimately decide where we will start in our plans. You'll see in our plan of action that we have four phases for our school district to meet various scenarios or various situations that could come up in our community. The status level of our district will be determined by the superintendent. As I make these decisions as to what status level we'll be in, I will utilize guidance from Governor DeWine, the Ohio Department of Health, the Fairfield County Health Department, and our Board of Education. We also want you to know all plans that we devise and put together will be put together with the health and safety of our students, our staff, and our community. We will use as much guidance as possible from various sources like the CDC, the Ohio Department of Health, and so on. And while we will try to uh, minimize as many risks as possible in our buildings, it is important to realize no plan will completely eliminate all risk. Our mission is simple. We want to support our students academically, socially, emotionally, and physically, their health needs. And we also want to do those same things for our staff. I think we all know and realize the social and emotional health of our students and our and our families have really taken a beating over the past couple of months. It's extremely important that we address those needs immediately. We also uh, want our, our community to know that as we are going through this, we are here for you. We're going to provide resources and various options. So we, we want you to know that you can reach out to us at any time to discuss questions or concerns you may have. We also want to continue to stress our plans have got to be flexible. And as a community, we've got to be patient. We will work issues as they come up. We'll address problems immediately when they're brought to our attention, and we'll work together to find solutions. The presentation this evening will not fully encompass all of the regulations and guidance that have been given to our schools. We will post all documents on our webpage that are sent to us from the Ohio Department of Health, the Ohio Department of Education, and Governor DeWine. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or your building principal. Section two of our presentation will cover the different phases of instruction and where we're at as a district. We have tried to color code this to make it simple for our community and to make it, quite frankly, easy for me to move us around as situations dictate change in our district. There are four basic levels or status levels that we will use in our district to dictate how we deliver education. Our top priority is to get to a status level green, and I'm hopeful that's where we'll start at the beginning of the school year. But as I said, and as we've tried to relate to the community many times, 
early on in this process, we wanted to be very proactive. And I believe we were as a district. We want to make sure our community is informed. And, I, and I'm hopeful you feel like we've done that. But now we're in a position where we really need to be patient. We've got to wait a little bit. We've got to take our time. And we need to see where we're at as a community the closer we get to August. Again, my goal is July 20th to set our district status level. So again, status level green. All students would be in attendance at school five days a week. We would have increased safety protocols and cleaning practices in the district. I will also go over each one of these status levels in a little, more, a little bit more detail shortly. A status level of yellow would be 50% of our students in attendance and 50% of our students utilizing a remote learning platform. In status level, we would alternate weeks. There has been great discussion and you see districts doing various uh, uh, examples of a status level yellow where part of students are in session and part of students are out of session. There are numerous ways to do this. Uh, some districts are doing every other day and every other Friday. Uh, you've seen bigger districts do Monday, Tuesday, off on Wednesday, and on Thursday, Friday. We have chosen a model of alternating weeks. We've done this for several reasons, and I'll explain those as we go through the slides. A status level of orange, we would have one building or perhaps two buildings uh, with a closure due to a specific outbreak. And then ultimately, and this is where we hope we never go back to, a status level of red where all students are at home on a remote learning curriculum. Should we be in a status green? Again, all students at school with increased safety protocols. Face masks will be strongly recommended for all children. In certain situations, face masks will be mandatory due to limited social distancing capabilities. We know that Governor DeWine has been very specific and that masks should be worn by students in grades 3 through 12 with a with a asterisk for K through 2 that we would like to have students have those on. It is the position of our district to help protect other students and our staff that we will treat all students in K through 12 the same. Facial coverings will be required for staff unless they meet an exception outlined by state orders. A green status would be full opening of school with increased safety protocols to reduce the potential spread. Also, all staff members in every phase are expected to report to work and be at school during normal work hours unless that's otherwise determined by the superintendent. In a status yellow, again, 50% of our students are in attendance in person, 50% of our students are on a remote educational platform. We would operate on alternating weeks. In week one, group one, students with the last name beginning A through L would attend school in person. Students with the last name beginning with letters M through Z would form group two and would attend in week two, and then we alternate back and forth. If a family or household has school-aged children with different last names, all students in the household will attend in-person classes on the same days. We would ask that you contact the district office and we will coordinate whether you would be in group one or group two. Students will be provided lessons, materials, and food supplies on their non-attendance week. So every Friday before students leave, and this is one of the reasons we chose this model, is at the end of the day on Friday, we can send students home with enough food supplies for the following week. If families don't have internet access, students would be able to download all work and be able to work offline during the following week. We also are trying to take into consideration uh, things like child care, uh, and, and, and that's not lost on us. We know that that is an important component. Uh, we, we are hopeful it would be easier to find child care for a week at a time as opposed to every other day. 
I also believe by going alternating weeks, we accomplish a couple of our key mission philosophy principles. First, for our staff, we're only exposing staff to half of our student population at a time. When you work on alternating days, staff members are exposed to all students, which could increase the chances of transmission of the COVID-19 virus. Also, it is the belief of the district that going five consecutive days is better consistency and allows for a, a more uh, productive environment where students are receiving face-to-face -face instruction multiple days in a row, which should help with education. It is also our belief that by separating our students, should we have an outbreak amongst the student population and we need to quarantine, only half of our students potentially are quarantined at one time and we conti can continue education with the other half of our students. Again, no plan is going to be perfect and no process is going to meet the needs of everyone. So we hope our community understands that a tremendous amount of thought and planning has gone into this. We would expect students to be engaged in their remote learning curriculum during normal school hours unless they are otherwise excused. During a yellow status, all staff members would be expected to report to school during their normal work hours to be here for students that are in person and to continue to help students that are remote learning at home. In a status level of orange, we would have specific building closures due to an outbreak. We want to stress that a status orange could be because the closure is instituted by the Fairville County Health Department or by the district. A very real concern for me is if we have a large segment of our teaching staff be in a position where they need to be quarantined, we could be in a position where we would not have adequate coverage for our classrooms and be forced to close a building. This is a key element as we proceed through this situation. Plans for food services would be shared with families at the time of the building closure. And again, in every status level, we will expect staff members to be present in the buildings to help continue education during our normal work hours. In our status red, Again, all buildings would be closed in this scenario. The red status would be a result of an executive order from Governor DeWine, the Ohio Department of Health, the Fairfield County Health Department, or if it's determined that our district must close down due to some sort of outbreak or risk. Remote, our, a remote learning curriculum will be instituted to provide consistent delivery of education to our students. And again, food distribution services would be announced at the time of closure. We would expect our students to be engaged in their remote learning curriculum during normal school hours, and we would expect staff to report to school to be available during normal work hours as well. We are instituting a virtual learning academy for the coming year. If a child is unable to physically attend school due to health-related concerns, or special circumstances. The district will be providing an online curriculum as an option for families. By July 20th of this summer, the district will create a process for families to select a full online option as a means to their education. Registration forms will be posted on our webpage as soon as possible. We want to stress Online learning cannot fully replicate the learning experience found in an in-person classroom setting. So we want families to carefully consider all factors in making a decision to move to a fully online curriculum. It is expected for families that pursue the option of going online full-time that you commit to doing that for the minimum of a grading period or nine-week period. We feel it would be detrimental to our students to continually go back and forth between an in-person and online educational process. To learn more about the Fairfield Union Virtual Learning Academy, you can visit the Virtual Learning Academy website, 
for details and that link will be in this presentation that is posted on the web page. Should we have to go to a red status and all students move to the virtual learning platform, you would not need to fill out the registration nor notify the district of that intention. Section 3 discusses the healthy learning environments. Again, the reality of our situation. Educational programs and settings are inherently designed for social interaction, not social distancing. We're trying to turn schools into something they were never meant to be. School is a place for kids to grow, learn, and interact with their peers, and we're trying to change that model. And it's obviously a challenge for all of us. We will do the following in accordance with the governor's directives and an abundance of caution to try to do everything we can to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We will vigilantly assess for symptoms of all, uh, all people in the buildings, whether that's staff members or students. We will stress the need to wash and sanitize hands to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We will thoroughly clean and sanitize all school environment to limit the spread on shared surfaces. We will practice social distancing and we will implement face covering policies as ordered by Governor DeWine. During the school day uh, or throughout the school day, our cleaning procedures will be extensive. We will work extremely hard to clean all areas of buildings and buses before school, during school, and then again after school. We have ordered many items to try to provide the, cl the cleanest and safest environment possible. We will be installing hand sanitizing stations in every classroom in the district. We will also be uh, putting up portable hand sanitizing stations at all entrance doors, large gathering areas like cafeterias and gymnasiums. We will be providing face shields and face masks for our staff members. We will put up social distancing barriers where applicable. We will post signs throughout all buildings reminding people of safe procedures to help spread, to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Some general safety strategies for good hygiene that we will stress. We will do daily health checks in our buildings of staff members and students. But more importantly, we ask that you do your part at home. We need you to do daily health checks before coming to school. And we can't stress this enough. If you do not feel well, or if you are sick, please stay home. Do not return to school or work until you meet CDC criteria or you're cleared by a medical provider. Students or staff members that are exhibiting any symptoms of COVID-19 will be sent home immediately or will be sent to a health care provider. I can't stress that enough. If a child begins to show symptoms, it will be the expectation that families come to pick up the child immediately. We will practice social distancing whenever feasible and as much as possible. We will stress the need to frequently wash hands with soap and water, and we will provide time during the day to do that. We want to stress to students and staff to avoid touching eyes, your nose, or your mouth. You want to make sure you cover up when you cough. All of the general good hygiene policies all of our grandparents tried to teach us all along. During the school day, things are definitely going to look different. District officials will work closely with the health department to maintain open communication so that we can have the most up-to-date information and guidance possible. Again, we will practice social distancing as much as possible, and we will have signs posted throughout the district to help maintain that social distancing. An abundance of cleaning and planning will be done daily to make sure we're addressing all needs. We will provide education for our staff and students in regards to COVID-19 and how to prevent the spread of the virus. 
we will utilize as much as possible every square foot of all of our facilities, including outdoor facilities, to spread students out and maximize our social distancing capabilities. Don't be surprised on a nice day to see a lot of our classes outside enjoying class. As we continue to shape the school day in the classroom, we need to do all we can to help with the social distancing. You can expect to see desks in rows facing the same direction. Group seating and group interactions in classes will be avoided as much as possible. Non-essential furniture will be moved out of classrooms to give us the maximum amount of space for student desks. We will be establishing secondary clinics in all of our buildings, so if a student is or a staff member is exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, we can isolate that student from other students to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. We'll be encouraging alternative meeting options, much like we did in the spring, utilizing Google Meets uh, or utilizing our outdoor uh, areas, such as the Land Lab Shelter House to hold various meetings. We will need to limit visitors to the main office areas only. Students and staff absences will be monitored closely so we can know if there is a sign of a greater problem. We will limit the number of students using the restroom at one time. We will encourage students to pack lunches. We will have lunch service every day but there's a good chance we'll be providing more prepackaged food items to help prevent transmission of COVID-19. We'll make every effort to spread students out in cafeterias to increase our social distancing. Facial coverings will be required in all food preparation areas. We will try as hard as possible to limit the number of students in our service lines. Our staff will have on face masks or face shields at all times. We will reduce congregation in high traffic areas like the cafeteria and front entrance ways. And as feasible, safety barriers will be put in place in the district. Also, we will work as hard as we can to stagger class changes so we can limit the number of students in hallways. And our arrival and dismissal procedures will look different to try to keep large segments of our students coming in the building at one time. We will be closing our traditional drinking fountains in some capacity. At this time, we're working hard to try to find cup dispensers to install by our drinking fountains so students would have those cups available. However, we are going to permit all students to use their own personal water bottles. At this time, we will not be having any field trips until further notice. On our playgrounds, we will work to disinfect high-touch areas but there may be some parts of playgrounds we will need to put off limits. At each of our buildings, there could be specific limitations based on the needs of the building. In the classroom, different manipulatives and equipment may be reduced or assigned to each student so we can limit how many people are touching different things. One of the biggest hot topics in our entire country and for schools will be masks. We will spend a little bit of time here and I want to stress as we get into this how we utilize masks will greatly depend on what status level we're in. If we're in a green status level and all students are in the buildings and therefore with all students in we have limited social distancing then we have to be very stringent and very strict with our mask usage. Whereas if we're in a status yellow and we only have half of our students in a building at one time, that inherently allows for greater social, social distancing and thus limits the need for masks a little bit. In a classroom, if we only have half the students, odds are students will be great, uh, greatly spread out, which would mean they could remove their masks for part of the time. Let's get into the requirements as they've been laid out uh, and guidelines given to us by the state. We will look to the CDC and the Ohio Department of Health for guidelines on facial coverings at all times. As feasible, cloth face coverings 
can be an important safety tool for individuals. We know that. We also know that cloth face coverings obviously can have a negative impact on the educational process. So we have to be smart about this and we have to approach it utilizing the best guidance we have at the time. We do want to stress all visitors to school buildings will be required to wear a face covering. And at this time, to limit potential exposure to our students and staff, we will not be utilizing volunteers during the school day. I'm extremely hopeful we can change that in due time, but to get the schools up and going, we want to be cautious moving forward. So to start off, who should not wear facial covering? We now know through guidelines that children under, under the age of two should not wear them, and anyone who has trouble breathing or is unconscious or incapacitated or otherwise unable to remove a mask without assistance should not use a face mask. The guidelines for our students. Per guidance from Governor DeWine and the CDC and the Ohio Department of Health, our district strongly recommends students wear facial coverings at all times unless they meet an exception. Students will be responsible for providing, providing their own facial coverings at school and on the bus. It has been a challenge for the district to order face masks and while we do have some here that we can use in an emergency if a child forgets one, we are limited in the number we have on hand. We will continue to look to order more masks, and as they become more readily available, we will try to stock those up as quickly as possible. Where students would be required to have face masks on, uh, where face masks would be mandatory for students, if students are within six feet of other students or staff members, if a student is exhibiting symptoms or showing signs of COVID-19, when students are on buses, masks would be mandatory. We do stress though, face shields will be permitted as an alternative to utilizing cloth face masks. The exceptions that have been given to us by the Ohio Department of Health, if it is not advisable for health or developmental reasons, students would be exempt from wearing a mask. If students are alone in a working space, again, outside of that six foot radius, they will be able to take their mask off. Also, if there is a functional reason for a student not to wear a facial covering of some sort, they would be exempt from wearing the mask. For our employees, the guidelines were a little bit more strict from Governor DeWine. Per his orders, employees must wear face coverings, whether it be a cloth mask, uh, a, a medical mask, or a clear face shield at all times unless it is unsafe to do so or we're doing so would significantly interfere with the learning process. The district will provide each staff member with a washable face covering and a clear face shield so they may choose to wear either one. Again, the situations where uh, masks are definitely mandatory are you know, inside that six foot radius. Uh, if you're around uh, other uh, employees or, or students that are considered to be in a high-risk category. If, a, if an employee is exhibiting symptoms or signs of illness, we would have them mask up immediately. And then anytime our staff members are going to be in high traffic areas, they should have a mask on. And again, the exceptions to wearing a mask are listed and will be given to our staff. For transportation, and this is another huge component that will really dictate what status level we go to as a district and how the district is going to function. There are some great challenges in our district with busing. Geographically, it's a large area, and it is extremely difficult to maintain social distancing on the bus. The guidelines we have right now are the district should strive to maintain six feet of separation on the bus. Most of our routes have 60 to 70 students registered to be on that bus. There are 24 to 26 seats on the bus. 
So depending on the route, we have two to three kids per seat. Uh, due to financial constraints, uh, a limited number of drivers, the geographical distance of our district, it, it's just impossible for us to look to triple our routes. The amount of time it would take to get students to school would be unmanageable and therefore we would be forced to change our status level. Our, our uh, bus transportation coordinator, Ms. Gaskins, is working hard with our principals and her staff to look at all busing routes as we speak. This is one of those details that we're still working on and why we don't want to declare a status level until July 20th because we need to figure out the busing component for our, our families and our students before we move forward. We do want to stress to parents that if you are going to transport your child to school or if your child plans on driving to school, please notify the transportation office as soon as possible to let them know of your intentions. The more students we have being dropped off uh, at school through their own transportation will lessen the number of students on buses and will change our routes and help us uh, transport our students more effectively and in a timely manner. The following procedures will be uh, in place on all buses. Uh, we ask again, parents please conduct daily health checks of your child. If they're showing any signs of illness, please do not send them to school. Students will be assigned seats on the bus. Uh, we will have students from the same family sitting together. Buses will be cleaned and disinfected before and after routes. Students will be required to wear facial coverings on buses unless the student meets an acceptable exception. Hand sanitizer will be available on every bus and it will be available at all entrance and exit points in the buildings. Drivers will be required to follow employee guidelines in regards to face coverings. Drivers will dismiss students one bus at a time when we get to school so that we don't have large groups of students trying to enter the school at the same time. When possible, we will increase ventilation on the bus, uh, have windows down. Uh, again, that will be dictated by weather. Uh, and we have health concerns uh, with students that might have asthma, or allergies, those type of things. Should we have a confirmed case of COVID-19 in our district, we will jump into action quickly. And this is a major concern for me as superintendent as we put all of our plans together. The virus can spread quickly and action must be swift. If there is a confirmed case of COVID-19 at school, Regardless of community transmission, any school in any community might be uh, forced to implement a short-term closure. If this happens, the CDC recommends the following procedures, regardless of the level of community spread. Once we learn of a confirmed COVID-19 case for a student or a staff member, we will notify the County Health Department immediately and begin working with them to put a plan of action in place. The Fairfield County Health Department has given us guidance on quarantine and what it means for direct exposure. If we have a confirmed case, that person would be quarantined for 14 days. Also, you would not be permitted to return to school until you are cleared by a healthcare provider and you're 72 hours without any signs or symptoms of the virus and not using medication during those 72 hours. Direct exposure as defined by the Fairfield Department of Health is being exposed to an individual in an area six feet or less and that person has a confirmed case of COVID-19 and you're around them for more than 15 minutes without a mask on. In those cases, we would quarantine for 14 days from the date of last exposure and then monitor for symptoms. For our district, should we have a, a confirmed case, our initial short-term move would be to go to a red status level or orange status level. 
This will give us time to ascertain the extent of the exposure to others from the confirmed positive case that we have. And it would allow our local health officials to help the district determine what our next steps should be. Ultimately, local health officials have the expertise to determine the necessity uh, for us to close and how long and to what scale that closure needs to be. During our school dismissals, we may consider canceling extracurricular group activities, school-based after-school programs and events. At this juncture, we simply don't know what's going to happen with all of those types of events. We are waiting for information from the Ohio High School Athletic Association and further guidance from the Ohio Department of Education and Governor DeWine in regards to things like athletics and band. Staff, students, and their families would be discouraged from gathering or socializing on campus any time we move to an orange or red status level. If uh, students unable to attend school, they will be required, uh, if, a, if a student has uh, some sort of exposure or they're quarantined uh, and they're unable to attend, um, they, they will be expected to transition to a remote learning platform that will be provided by the district. Once we know that we have an established case uh, and, and that there's a confirmed positive, uh, we will communicate with our community immediately. Uh, we will put out messengers, uh, voicemails. Uh, we will send emails home uh, to, in student accounts in the affected buildings. And we will stress the need to self-monitor for signs and symptoms. We will coordinate with local health officials to communicate dismissal decisions and the possible exposure extent. In doing these things, it is extremely critical that we consider the potential impact both socially and emotionally on those that are infected. In these circumstances, it is critical for the district to preserve confidentiality of the student or staff member to the extent possible considering all the health and safety issues. If there is a positive case, we know our families want to know about it. If your child is in a building that has had a confirmed case, we know you want to know about it. But as a district, we do need to make sure we are protecting confidentiality. Our guidelines for responding to a confirmed case, uh, again, as we work with state and local health officials, we will immediately clean and disinfect the infected areas thoroughly. Uh, the early indications are if we need to go to a red or orange status level, that would be for a two to five day period to make sure a deep clean happens of that facility. We would coordinate again with the local health officials to determine fully our next steps. However, uh, we, we do have some plans in place as far as what we would do with our cleaning practices. As we make decisions about extending school dismissals, uh, we, we would take various uh, considerations, uh, various factors into consideration uh, during dismissals, after cleaning and disinfection. Schools and programs may stay open for staff members while students stay home. Keeping the facilities open allow teachers to develop and deliver their lessons more effectively and maintain continuity of teaching and learning. It also allows other staff members to continue to provide other services and help with additional response efforts like food, food distribution services. Again, we would work with our local health officials to make determinations if we can, in fact, keep buildings open for our staff. Decis decisions on which, if any, staff should be allowed in the school would be made in collaboration with our health officials. So we want to stress that should uh, our buildings be closed for any reason, we will not let education stop. We'll do everything we can to make sure our teachers have the tools that they need, and we'll continue to provide for our students and families 
to the greatest extent possible. Ultimately, though, our, our number one priority will always be uh, to protect the safety and wellness of our students and staff and our community. For additional resources and additional information, we have a list of websites that you can visit here. Again, this entire presentation will be on our district webpage after we finish our discussion here this evening. We hope you'll be able to visit that and reread uh, the presentation that was given to you this evening. You'll be able to check these websites uh, that allow for uh, you to gain up-to-date information. And again, we will email this presentation to our students uh, so they have it in their uh, student email account as well. As we bring this evening to a close, I want to reemphasize a couple of points. We understand that this plan may not meet the needs of every family or meet the expectations of every family. We hope that you'll be patient and flexible and know that we've worked extremely hard to find a balance between the necessity and the needs of our students, our families, our community, and our staff. We ask that you be patient as we continue to, to, develop, to develop plans, as we receive additional guidance from the state or the Ohio Department of Health or the Fairfield Department of Health, we will continue to revise and update our plan to meet the needs of everyone. We also want to remind you that on July 20th, we will set our first status level for the start of the school year. Again, we are hopeful to see all of our students every day in our schools. We hope that we're on a status level green, but it's simply just too early to make that call. So on July 20th, we will set our first status level for the start of school on August 20th. That is one month out, and we are hopeful that will give families plenty of time to prepare, and it will allow the district a chance to put final preparations in place for the start of school. Finally, I want to stress to our community the need for us to come together and unify for our students. There's nothing this district can't do when it puts its mind to it and it comes together as a single entity and pushes forward for what is best for this district and our kids. I'm a parent before I'm the superintendent and I couldn't be more proud to have my kids attend Fairfield Union because of the level of support that we get from our community. We often say this place is different and most definitely special. And it is challenging times like this where that is never more evident. I'm going to share a line that I, that I gave to our seniors during graduation. And it's a, it's a quote that Coach Urban Meyer gave to his team. When I needed you the most, you gave me your very best. Our kids need all of us the most right now. The challenge is for all of us to give our very best. Join me in accepting that challenge to meet the needs of our children and our school district. It has been a pleasure to be with you this evening. I thank you for joining me. I'm hopeful that tonight was informative and shed some light on where we are as a district and where we're going. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me at chadbellville at fairfieldunion.org, or you may call the district office. I will respond to all calls and emails as soon as possible. We want to address your concerns and answer your questions as quickly as possible. It is with great pride that I come to you tonight and as we close, I'll share one more time. It is absolutely a great day to be a Falcon. Thank you and good night.